Hey y'all, how you doing? Welcome back. Let's take a look at today at variables and evaluation. Well, evaluation just means basically find the value of something. And today we're just going to be practicing doing some little arithmetic and then kind of mixing in X's and Y's and A's and things like that. So a variable, what does the word vary mean? V-A-R-Y. So if something varies, what happens to it? Kind of changes, right? Okay, so a variable in algebra is just a letter that stands for a number. It could mean, it could be any number. All right, I mean, you can put things in, you can check things. Chemists and biologists, all people, kinds of people do, I mean, computer technicians try numbers, they try formulas, they try this, and they, I mean, the reason why you can hold a, a phone in your hand that's better than any computer made in the 1990s or even 2000s uh, is that because of people messing around with variables and doing arithmetic and stuff like that in algebra. So anyway, that's a variable. Um, Something like this. What is the answer to that? X plus 4. Trick question, right? Because what does that depend on? I mean, well, yeah, what is X? I mean, what is X? Could, I mean, X, if X is 5, the answer is 9. If X is 10, the answer is 14, you know, and so on. So that just depends on what that is, all right? So let's look at this evaluation. When you look at uh, terms like this, and go ahead and copy this down if you want to. And you, if, you, if you're not familiar with this, x, y, now look between those two. Do you see a plus or a minus or any operational sign? You don't, right? So what you're going to assume is that x, y means x times y. So they don't, it saves time and saves hassle that not have to write a little dot there every single time. Everybody who works with algebra understands that when you have x and y next to each other, that just means you're going to multiply those two things together. Same thing over here. If you have three x's, that means you have three times x. We just don't have to write a dot or parentheses or, you know, whatever. If you wrote a little x, that'd be even more confusing, wouldn't it? Okay. So let's look at this. They'll give you problems like this. Evaluate x, y, in other words, x times y, plus x if x is 2 and y is 4. So all you need to do is just rewrite this expression right here x times y, well x is 2, 2 times y is 4, plus x is 2, so right there. And now we are going to assume that you remember from last time order of operations, right? So if you have this 2 times 4 plus 2, which one of those do you do first? This one. Okay, don't do that first, that's addition. We do multiplication and division before we do addition and subtraction. So that's going to be 8 plus 2 or 82. No, that's not it. Okay. Then there we go. Okay. All right. Try this one. Copy this down if you want to. Pause it. Now, this looks a little more complicated, but it's not. And again, if you see X and M and Y next to each other with no, no operational sign, anything at all, you're just going to assume that they're all being multiplied by each other. So, X times M times Y is what this is. So, they're telling us X is 2 times M is 5 times Y is 4 and that's that part right there, minus x times y. So x is 2, and then y is 4. Now again, if you write this out like this, you have to make sure that you are consistently doing order of operations correctly. You've got to multiply first. So it looks like you need to do this first, and this, and then you subtract. So 2 times 5 is 10, times 4 is 40, minus, and then 2 times 4 is 8, and that'll be 32. There you go. All right, let's try one more. This is going to be tricky. Aha, look, fractions. Okay, so this is going to be more fun than, than even you can possibly imagine. All right, well, m times x just means m times x. So let's stick it in there. m is 5 eighths times x is 2 thirds plus 4 times m, so that'll be 4 times m. Oh, that's a fraction. Let's just make this a fraction. Who cares? That's going to be 5, 5 eighths. Okay. And again, you should see the order of operations. You're going to multiply first, then add those two. Okay, so let's go, go straight across here. Uh, again, you know, you can always do normal things with fractions, like, you know, cancel. This will be a 1. That'll be a 4. So 5 times 1 is 5, 4 times 3, plus, and then look at here, 4 and 8. That's going to be 1, 4 goes into 4 one time, goes into 8 twice. 
So one times five is five, one times two, boom, there we go. So five twelfths plus five halves. Well, let's take a look. What do we got here? Uh, we have to have a common denominator, so let's make this 12 both times. So five twelfths just stays there. This will also be 12. So two times six is 12, five times six is 30. So we have 35 over 12. And if you wanted to do a mixed number, 12 goes into 35 two times with 11 left over. There you go, piece of cake. Okay, all right. Try the practice problems on page 107 and see how you do. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused it. This is gonna be uh, xy plus yx, x times y plus y times x. Now wait a minute. If you got two numbers that you multiply them together, does it matter what order they're in? Like what's 10 times eight? 80. What's eight times 10 though? 80. So a little bit of a trick question here. So x times y plus y times x. 8 plus 8, 16. There you go. Okay, pause it and try B. Okay, well, M, P, X, we're going to multiply all three of these things together. So M is 6, P is 4, X is 3, plus M times X, that's going to be 6, X is 3, there we go. Okay, well, 6 times 4 is 24. By the way, if you want to do this in a different order, you could. Let's do it that way. It'd probably be easier. 4 times 3 is 12. 6 times 12, we know that times table. It's 72. Plus 6 times 3. There we go. 90. All there is to it. Okay. All right. I will see you guys next, uh, next time. Blessings to you. Uh, thank God sometime for all he's done for you. And uh, do, do something nice to a brother or sister and your parents. All right. See you next time.